Before we begin, just want to thank our sponsors, as we always do, and are so appreciative always, uh, to Yaakov and Devorah Shore, uh, who sponsored the learning this evening in memory of David Ben Chaim, uh, Devorah's father, um, is Neshama Shav and Aliyah through our learning. Also sponsored this week by uh, Merle Datnow and Brian Datnow in memory of uh, Merle's sister, Roslyn, and her Neshama should also have an Aliyah. Also sponsored this week by Noel and Miriam Fishman um, uh, in the schus of the Yortzeit of Miriam's father, Binyamin Ben Mordechai Halevi. Uh, his memory should always be a blessing and uh, our learning should act as a schus for his Neshama to have an Aliyah. Also sponsored this week, uh, we're making up for lost time here, also sponsored this week by Martin and Fran Hirschbein in loving memory of uh, their parents, Shirley and Harold Levine and Hadassah and Benno Hirschbein uh, and their, um, uh, their parents, Neshamas, should have an aliyah through our learning and also to wish a mazel tov uh, to Ami Eliezer Levine on his bar mitzvah, David and Claire Elman's uh, grandson uh, who was bar mitzvah this past week in Israel, and what a schus that he kicks off his bar mitzvah with the schus of learning in his honor. And um, uh, he should, uh, this should be the beginning of a long history, a long life filled with Torah and mitzvos and nachas for his entire family. So let me just share my screen over here before we begin. And Marty, I'm going to make you uh, co host. Um, uh, in case you see anyone come into the waiting room. Um, and let's begin. You know, we on Wednesday nights, we, um, uh, everyone can see my screen. Everyone sees the Gemara over here. So on Wednesday nights, we um, uh, always use it as an opportunity to um, uh, investigate uh, unique pieces of our tradition, either uh, from a historical perspective or uh, unique things that may arise um, uh, that are directly related to the Shulchan Aruch and to other related sources in order to get a sense of um, uh, appreciation and depth to our traditions, to our history and to the Torah in general. There is one particular custom that we do that perhaps is one of the most discussed customs that we have throughout the year. And it is perhaps one of the most unique customs that we have, we have. for the entire year. And that is the custom of reciting, uh, reciting Halal, the night of the Seder. That part of the Seder we know uh, we, we sing Kade, Shor Chatz, right? We have all the different parts of the Seder, all the 15 different parts of the Seder. And we also have included Halal. Now, there are so many fascinating aspect, aspects of Halal. In fact, my Rebbe, Rabbi David Hirsch Shlita, uh, he, I think every single year leading up to Pesach, at some point, will give over the shear, uh, will give over our class discussing the unique aspect of Halal, the night of the Seder. And I think he has about 18 or 19 different questions related to hollow the night of the Seder and how it, it seems to be like such a strange hollow. We're not going to go through all, all 18 or 19 questions this evening, but we will go through about, you know, four or five or six different questions just to appreciate how unique it is, but that it is so calculated, the hollow the night of the Seder, that it speaks volumes of how glot kosher the Torah is. And I mean that in every sense of the pun. So says, says the Gemara in Meseches Megillah, the following on Daf Chaf Ahmed Beis. You know, the Mishnah right over here has a whole list of different mitzvot that we do during the day. And these are mitzvot that should be done during the day and you can't do them at night. For example, there are two obligations of reading the Megillah. We read the Megillah at night and then again during the day, but those are two separate obligations, right? You can't just hear the one at night. You have to hear the one during the day as well. So you could hear the Megillah during the day, the entire day. 
And also recitation of hollow is a mitzvah that is done during the day. Tkia shofar, blowing the shofar is a mitzvah that's done during the day. Natilas lulav, shaking lulav is done during the day. There's a whole list of tefillas. Mosav, Mosav is done during the day. A whole list of mitzvot that are done during the day. Halal is on this list. Halal is a mitzvah that is done only during the day. And the Gemara actually quotes a verse, a verse from the book of Psalms. David HaMelech tells us that halal should be done during the day. Lekriyas HaHalal, Dechsev, as it is written in Sefer Tehillim, in Mizrach Shemesh Ad Mevo'o, that Mehul uh, Shem Hashem, that David HaMelech, that's the rest of the Pasuk, that David HaMelech says that we sing we, the, the praises of God Shemesh, that from the time the sun rises ad mevo'o until it sets. We learn from here that halal is recited during the day, not at night. Hold on one second. Halal, the night of the Seder, is recited at night. Of course, obviously, it's recited at night. So isn't that against this Gemara over here? Now, it is interesting. There's a minhug amongst many, many, many communities, definitely in every single Sephardic community, this is the custom. In many Hasidic communities, this is the custom. And even many Ashkenaz communities, this is the custom. This is the custom in our community as well, that in Shul, the night of the, the, the first night of Pesach, we, uh, the, I'm sorry, the night of Pesach, we, um, during the first days, we have Hallel at night in Shul. Now, that Hallel is kind of like a standalone Hallel. That's also unique halal. Why it is we say halal at night there? It, 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 it could be one of two reasons. Number one, that this is a, uh, it's, it's a Kabbalistic halal, that one that is brought down through the Kabbalah of the Ariza that we say halal then. Uh, and the second reason could be pattern after the carbon Pesach, that while we would be bringing and preparing the carbon Pesach, Klai Yisrael would sing halal. So that is a commemoratory, uh, commemorative halal, excuse me, of the halal that was done in the, um, uh, when we were giving the carbon Pesach. So that's like a standalone hollow, okay? That's not an institutionalized hollow. How the night of the Seder that we say around the table, that is an institutionalized hollow that is part of the structure of the Seder. Every single person in Kali Yisrael does it. Isn't it against this Gemara? That this Gemara is telling me that institutionalized hollows should not be done at night. Because the because the the pasuk in Talmud says that we sing Hashem's praises only during the day. That's question number one. How do we sing Halal at night? Question number two. Here we go. Says the Shulchan Aruch the following. We know that generally speaking, women are not obligated in time bound mitzvot. Time bound mitzvot. Women are not obligated in. There are a few exceptions to this rule. Um, probably most famously would be Shabbos. That the obligation to be makadesh as a Shabbos, the obligation in Kiddush applies to women, even though that is a time down positive mitzvah. And the reason is because, as the Gemara says, that just as women are obligated or um, are, are, are subject to the prohibitions of violating Shabbos, so too they are obligated in the positive aspects of Shabbos as well. Um, the same applies to uh, the obligation to eat matzah. Eating matzah is an uh, is the flip side of the prohibition of eating of not eating chametz. So there's a prohibition against eating chametz. Therefore, women are also obligated in the mitzvah to eat matzah, even though eating matzah is a time-bound mitzvah. Okay, but generally speaking, women are not obligated in time-bound mitzvot. However, says the Machaber, says Rabbi Yosef Karo, Gam Hanashim. Women as well, Chayavos Ba'arbas Kosos, are obligated to drink the four cups of wine because they also were part of the miracle. And all of the mitzvot that are obligated that night. Now, what mitzvot are left? The obligation to eat matzah, women are obligated to do. The obligation to eat maror is, part, is, is, is included in the obligation of carbon Pesach, and therefore it would make sense that they're obligated to eat maror as well, even though that's also a time-bound mitzvah, but that is that that also makes a lot of sense. So let's see, what, what are we left with? We're left with drinking the four cups of wine, telling over the story of the Exodus and hollow. So hollow, generally speaking, women are not obligated in it. It says explicitly in Shulchan Aruch that women are not obligated in hollow the rest of the year. Why? Because that is a time-bound mitzvah. Hollow the night of the Seder though, women are obligated in this hollow. Why? 
Why is this how different? I feel like saying Manashtana Halo Hazeb Mikola Halelo. Why is this halo different than any other halo of the year? Marty liked that one. There you go. Okay, that's question number two. Why are women obligated in this halo? So question number one, we said that it is at night, this halo. Halal, generally speaking, should not be said at night. Number two is why are women obligated in this halal? Here we go. Number three. The Gemara tells a fascinating, um, a, fa a fascinating story that when Klai Yisrael were experiencing Kriyas Yamsov, the splitting of the sea, um, one of the most monumental experiences in, 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 in human history where a group of slaves former slaves, soon to be former slaves, were leaving Egypt. Their enemies are chasing them behind and want to kill them, bring them back as slaves. And they get stuck at the dead end of the sea. God makes an open miracle, splits the sea. Klyestral walk through on perfectly dry ground, make it to the other side unscathed. And the Mitzrim behind them, the water collapses upon them and they drown in the sea. This is the story of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the end story of the, the end of, of the story of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, the completion through Kriyas Yamsuf that we are going to celebrate on the second days of Pesach, Shavi Shel Pesach. Says the Gemara that when all of this happened, Bikshu Malachi Hashare says the Gemara, that the Malachi Hashare, the ministering angels, asked God, they asked permission, Lomar Shira to sing God's praises. They were very excited, right? Jewish people win. We know the Jewish people are a chosen nation. This is very exciting for us. We, God, your will is coming to fruition in this world. This is reason to sing your praises. Can we please sing Shira? Can we sing Halal? Amar Kodesh Baruch who God says to the angels. Maisa Yada, he like re re responds. Uh, How could you be so crass? Masa Yada, he by Yom. That my handiwork, my creations, namely the Egyptians, are drowning in the sea. And you want to start singing? How inappropriate, how crass can you be? How terrible you how, how could you ask such a thing? So says the Shibole Aleket from this whole episode with the Malachi Asharis that it would be inappropriate for the angels to sing God's praises. When they're when 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 you're witnessing God's creatures being destroyed, says the Shibole Aleket, it is for this reason that on the second days of Yantiv, that on Shvi'i Shel Pesach, that on the second days of Pesach, we do not sing a full hollow. We sing half a hollow. Okay. Um, uh, the reason why during Cholamoid we don't sing a full hollow, it has to do, it says in uh, in Mishnah Brewer, has to do with the uh, with the carbonos of the day, um, uh, because the, the carbon is not new. So since there aren't any new carbonos during Cholamoid, we're not going to be adding on a full hollow. That's why we only do a half hollow during Cholamoid, during the intermediary days between the first days of Pesach and the last days of Pesach. And then the last days of Pesach, we do not sing a full hollow because the last days of Pesach is the anniversary of Kriyas Yamsuf, being that we weren't there. Therefore, we are like the ministering angels, that it would be inappropriate for us to sing a full hollow. So in order, in, 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 in um, recognition over the fact that there was a blood shed on the anniversary of Kriyas Yamsuf, we don't sing a full hollow. That's what the Shibole Haleket writes. Therefore, you have to ask the question, which is, the night of the Seder is the anniversary of Makas Bechoros, that on that night, that on that night, at midnight, what happened? The firstborns were slayed. They were killed. The 10th of the Makos, this was the clincher. And Caius Roll then was taken out of Egypt. That night, the night of the Seder, is an anniversary, yes, of great triumph over the fact that we were saved, but also of great tragedy over the fact that there was bloodshed, Mitzram died, just like at Kriyas Yamsuf. So if that's, if that's the case, it would be crass for us to sing a full hollow the night of the Seder. But what do we do? 
Nevertheless, we sing a full howl the night of the Seder. Why is it any different than the second days of Pesach? Second days of Pesach, we only sing half a halal. So therefore the first, the, therefore the night of the Seder, we should only sing half a halal also in order to, um, uh, to, to, to be sensitive to the life that was lost of the mitzvah. And that is question number three. Question number four. The Gemara in Erchin on Daf Yud Amen Aleph. Baruch Atan Lecham Shukran Yisrael. Thank you. The Gemara in Erchin on Daf Yud Amen Aleph, the Mishnah and then the Gemara, has a list of all the times during the year that we sing a full hollow. All the times during the year we sing a full hollow, and this is codified by Maimonides 1138 to 1204, the greatest of all of our Rishonim. He writes in his Mishnah Torah, he brings down, he codifies this list of all the times that we sing a full hollow. And he writes in the uh, in, in Paragimel Halacha Vav in Hilchus Hanukkah, and then in Halacha Zayin, he, he talks about the difference between whether or not you live in the land of Israel versus outside the land of Israel. In the land of Israel, you sing 18 times during the year, a full hollow. Outside the land of Israel, 21 times, okay? So we're outside the land of Israel right now. Let's just do the quick math, says the Raman. Mekomo she'osin yom tov sheni, yom tov sheni, the places that sing halal, that, that celebrate a second day of Yom Tov, namely outside the land of Israel, they sing a complete halal 21 times during the year. Tisha Yemei Hachag, nine days of Sukkot, Shmona Yemei Hanukkah, eight days of Hanukkah, Ushne Yamim Shel Pesach, the first two days of Pesach. Where are we up to in our in our count over here? We're up to 19. Ushne Yamim Shel Atzeres. And two days of Shavuos, 21 days. The Rambam missed two complete halals in his list. It's not just two the first days of Pesach, Ushnei Yamim Shal Pesach, the first two days of Pesach, we, we have two halals, but it really should be four. During davening, we sing a full halal, and the night of the Seder, to Sedarim, we also sing a full halal. So then if that's the case, outside the land of Israel should be 23 days, in the land of Israel should be 20, 23 outside the land of Israel, no, yeah, 23 outside the land of Israel and 20 in the land of Israel should be um, uh, should be the list, not 18 and 21. Yeah, Nora, you can unmute yourself. But they only have one Seder in Israel. Right. So, oh, so so no, so it would be it would be um, uh, 19. Yeah, 19 in the land. Thank you. 19 in the land of Israel and 23 outside the land of Israel. But that's not what the list is. The list is 18 and 21. Not included in this list is Hallel, the night of the Seder. What is going on here? So the answer is in the Haggadah itself. There are, th there are three different types of Hallel that we say. Insti uh, institutional Hallels. When I say institutional Hallels, I mean um, Hallels that are, that are um, recited across the board. Okay, three different types of full hollows. Number one is, as the Ramban writes, Nachmanides, 1194 to 1270, Spanish Rishon, who passed away in the land of Israel, is buried on Harazetim, probably perhaps the greatest Jewish philosopher to ever live, says the Ramban that part of our fulfillment of the obligation of Simchas Yom Tov, of celebrating Yom Tov, of enjoying Yom Tov, is through song, through singing God's praises, through hollow. And that is the hollow that we sing in shul, like the, during davening of the first day of Pesach, second day of Pesach, uh, throughout the holiday of Sukkot, uh, Shavuos, part of our fulfillment of the Simchas Yom Tev. Simchas Yom Tev applies to the holidays. And Hallel, when we sing Hallel, it is part of our fulfillment of the obligation of Simchas Yom Tov, of enjoying and celebrating Yom Tov in a jovial way. The second type of halal is halal that we sing in commemoration of a miracle that happened. 
So while there may be no obligation of Simchas Yom Tov, we still want to be able to commemorate a miracle that took place. And therefore, we do that by singing halal. That is like the halal that we sing on Hanukkah, which, by the way, according to the Chassam Sofer, that type of a halal could very well be the Orisa, because you are, you are recognizing the hand of God through song. That is part of the mitzvah of of Lahodos Ula Halal, singing God's praises in commemoration of a miracle. This, as the Chassam Sofer, could very well be a fulfillment of a positive commandment. This is the second type of halal, where we sing halal in commemoration of a miracle, like on Hanukkah. So we've covered already all of the different types that are listed in the Gemara and Erechen. But there's a third type of institutionalized halal, again, hollow that would be done across the board that is not necessarily scheduled and set. And that is hollow. And this is the way that the Ron explains it. This is hollow that is sung when you experience a miracle. When, ex when a miracle happens to you, you are obligated to respond to that miracle with song, with singing God's praises. That halal bishas hanes, halal at the time that a miracle happens to you, is a third type of halal. This is the halal that we sing the night of the Seder. The night of the Seder, we have an obligation, as it says in the Haggadah. Behold, or vador chayev adam aliros es atzmo ki ilu hu yatsam imitzrayim. That in every single generation, a person is obligated to view themselves as if they are leaving Mitzrayim. The, the Chassam Sofer and Rav Chaim Soloveitchik and many others struggle with this obligation. Yeah, you're, you're obligated to view yourself as if you're leaving Mitzrayim. Now, by the way, the Rambam has a different girsa. He has a different version of this obligation. That, that's not the way the Rambam says that we are obligated. That's not what the Rambam says we're obligated to do the night of the Seder. There's no obligation to view yourself as if you are literally walking out of the land of Israel. The Rambam says it's laharos esatz mokilu yatsim mitzrayim. You have to display. You need to. It's 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 figurative. You you need to display yourself as if you're leaving mitzrayim. Act it out. That's and that and that explains all of the different customs that we have at the night of the seder. But according to the way that it's written inside of the Ashkenaz Haggadah, the way that it's it's the it, the most prevalent, um, uh, uh, the most prevalent version of the Mishnah says Lero says Asmo, that we're obligated to view ourselves as if we're leaving Mitzrayim, says the Chassam Sofer and Rav Chaim Soloveitchik, that's impossible. It's impossible to view yourself as if you're leaving Egypt. You weren't a slave. It's impossible to walk a mile in another person's shoes. Even people that are Holocaust survivors, you may be able to relate to slavery a lot better than everyone else, but you did not experience that specific servitude and that specific slavery, right? My grandfather, Zecher Tzadik Levracha, he experienced slavery. He experienced being tortured. He experienced horrific things. He didn't experience being a slave in Egypt. It's not to say one is worse than the other or one is better than the other. They're both horrible. They're just two completely different experiences. They're, they happened to a different group of people in a different time period. It's impossible for a person to actually experience what it's like to leave Egypt. So then how do we fulfill this obligation? Behold, every single generation, we are obligated to view ourselves as if we're leaving Egypt. So says the Chassam Sofer that the word ki'ilu is very important over here, as if you left Mitzrayim. Namely, says the Chassam Sofer, you need to contemplate and meditate the night of the Seder over all of the Nisim, the Niflos, all of the great miracles, all of the wonders that God has done for you in your life to the point that you are sitting at the Seder as a functioning human being, as a functioning Ever Hashem, as a, Jewish, as a member of the Jewish people, learning Torah, fulfilling mitzvot. The night of the Seder, if, if, and God willing, we should all be healthy and strong and be there. If a person makes it there, 
It's nothing short of a miracle. In fact, argues the Chassam Sofer, it's not any less of a miracle than the Jewish people being taken out of Egypt. That when you stop and consider and you take stock of your life, you, you, you come to recognize that your life is no less of a miracle than the lives of those that were taken out of the land of Egypt. With this in mind, and if a person actually goes through this process, and this is what the Night of the Seder is supposed to elicit from us, if a person actually does this, so then you, the Night of the Seder, are experiencing a miracle in real time. You are coming to recognize your life as an open miracle. And therefore, because a miracle is happening to you, you need to respond with a spontaneous hollow. Now, with this in mind, we can go back and answer all the questions. First question we had was, you only say hollow during the day, not at night. No. Scheduled hollows are only said during the day, not at night. If a miracle happens to a person at night, you say hollow at night. And this was Paskin by the Chida. The Chida Chacham Yosef David Azulai was an 18th century Sephardic um, prolific author. And professionally, he was a fundraiser. He used to go and travel uh, from city to city um, all over the world, collecting funds for Jews in the land of Israel during the um, some of the first settlements in the land of Israel in the 18th century, he went and was a fundraiser for those communities. Whenever he would go to different towns, and, and by the way, he recorded basically like memoirs from his entire travels. Unbelievable. We have a whole plethora of, uh, of, of libraries full of writings from the Chida. I think he wrote something like 120 Svarim in his lifetime. So it's, it's unbelievable. The, the Chida... So during one of his travels, where so he was traveling by boat between two, two countries, and they were traveling during the night, and um, they, they hit a horrible storm, and the boat is shaking, and, the, and they think the boat is about to capsize, and it's, it's like the story of Yonah, right? I mean, Baruch Hashem, they didn't throw the Chida off, off, uh, off, sh off ship, um, but the, the, the boat is shaking. People on the boat are, are, are screaming. They, they think their life is over. I mean, they, 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 this is it. They think the boat is about to capsize. Like an open miracle, the, 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 storm, the storm just stops right before they were certain the boat was going to go down. And then the boat settled. They come to shore. It's the middle of the night. The, the, the Chida tells his students that are traveling with him, come, we have to go sing hollow. So they say, oh, uh, Hacham, I, you know, the, Maran, I'm sorry, maybe you don't realize you're not supposed to say hollow at night. You might not realize that there's a Mishnah in Megillah that says you shouldn't say hollow at night, right? Like they know more than the Chida. The, the Chida, by the way, you should just know that during his travels, he would go, the very first stop he would make is that he would go to the local um, base medrash, to the local Jewish library, and just drink up all of the song, all of the Sfarim. He clearly had a photographic memory, which by the way is, is relatively common in the Sephardic, in the world of Sephardic Chachamim. It's almost like it's a, it's a prerequisite to be a Sephardic Chacham is you have to have some photographic memory. That's why I'm, I'm never gonna be a Sephardic Chacham because I just, I don't fit the bill. It, 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 his memory was unbelievable. He would just memorize all the Sfarim in the base Medrash. And then during his travels, he would write comments on the books that he memorized. And that's why we have all of these books from the Chida, all of these commentaries from the Chida. So he definitely knew the Mishnah is in, in, in Megillah. He knew the Pasuk from David Amel that says you only sing Halal during the day. But explained the Chida to his students, said, no, this Halal that David Amel is talking about are scheduled calendaric Halals, Halals that are set in stone, that are part of an experience of Simchas Yantiv. You, you know when Yantiv is coming. Yantiv is scheduled. It's part of a, the night of the Seder. The hollow that we sing is supposed to be a reactionary hollow to you experiencing a miracle. That hollow, when a, mir when a miracle happens to you, you should scream out in hollow. This explains why, of course, women are obligated in this hollow as well, even though it's a time-bound mitzvah. Because if, if, a, if a miracle happens to a woman, to a woman, you have to you have to you have to sing out in 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 hollow. It shouldn't be any different. This explains why. Um, the night of the Seder, we sing Hallel, despite the fact that it's also the anniversary of the death of so many Egyptians. 
Why? Because just like the Jewish people, when they experienced firsthand the miracle of Kriyas Yamsov, even though all of the Egyptians drowned at that moment, for an outsider looking in, it would be crass to sing a full hollow when you're witnessing both triumph and destruction. When you're seeing both God's salvation and also God's destruction at the same time, yes, that would be crass and inappropriate. But if you yourself are experiencing the miracle, if you're on the winning side, you just like the Jewish people after they crossed through the Yamsuf, sung Az Yashir Moshe Uvnei Hazos Lashem, they sang song. So too we, the night of the Seder, even though there's also tra- a, a, an anniversary of tragedy, but we are currently experiencing a miracle, and therefore it is not inappropriate. It's also why it's not on the list of the Rambam. The Rambam's list of the 18 times in the land of Israel that we sing Hallel, the 21 times outside the land of Israel, Hallel the night of the Seder is not on there because Hallel the night of the Seder is supposed to be, at least conceptually, and and hopefully, and and ideally, and it's really the way it should happen, is that it should be a Hallel that's elicited through an emotional reaction. It should be a reactionary Hallel, not a hollow that is like every other hollow that is institutionalized in this kind of a way. This explains, by the way, why we go straight from the whole door of a door that in every generation we're obligated to view ourselves leaving Mitzrayim to an introductory paragraph to the hollow. Hollow begins right over here. Halleluka, halleluah, abde Hashem. But we have an introductory paragraph that we don't have by any other hollow during the year. Of Lafika Hanachnu Kayavim, therefore we are obligated to give praise, Lahalo, Lashabeah, Lafayer, Lerameim, all of the glorify, exalt, exalt. You give all of the praises. We are therefore, therefore, what, what do you mean, therefore? Why are we giving this introductory phrase with it? It's because since we, we, we now are experiencing a miracle in our lives, we are meditating over the fact that we are a miracle, we are currently experiencing a miracle, therefore, Lafika, we are obligated to sing praise. It's the only hollow during the year where we have such an introductory paragraph. This is important to put in the full context of the Seder as well. This concept where the night of the Seder, where we, we are experiencing a nace, should be put into the greater context of what we're trying to accomplish the night of the Seder. The night of the Seder, there are two, th- two, two things we're trying to accomplish. Number one, that we're trying to accomplish this sense of miracle. And number two, that we are experiencing a miracle. And number two, that we are supposed to come to that realization through the process of Sipri Yitzhiya and time telling over the story of the Exodus. Now, we have an obligation to remember the Exodus every single day of the year. Every single day of the year, there's an obligation to remember the Exodus. This we fulfill um, by Kriyashma. That Kriyashma, every single day, when we say the last paragraph of the Shema, that is us fulfilling the mandate of Leman Tiskor at Yom Tzedcha Me'eretz Mitzrayim Kol Yemei Chayecha. The obligation to remember the Exodus every single day of your life. The night of the Seder, there's an additional obligation though. This is the obligation of Sipur Yitzhiya Mitzrayim, as the Pasuk tells us, the Higadata Labincha Bayom Hahu Lemor, that we have to tell over the story on the anniversary of the Exodus, what happened? So these are two separate obligations. There's the obligation of Zahir Asisias Mitzrayim, of, of remembering the Exodus, and also Sipri Asisias Mitzrayim, telling over the story. Rav Chaim Soloveitchik, um, uh, who passed away in 19, 1918, was the Rashiva of the Vajan Yeshiva. I believe he was appointed at the age of 26 in 1880. 1880 at the age of 26. Yeah, I think the math is about right. Um, Because Reb Chaim passed away when he was 65 years old in 1918. Marty will do the math and get back to us. In 1880, he was appointed at a very, very young age as the second to Rosh Yeshiva, co-Rosh Yeshiva of the Vlazhin Yeshiva, along with his wife's grandfather, which by the way, the way that the two of them were set up, um, uh, the Shidduch was made at a Shiva house that... um, the 
I forget who was sitting Shiva, either the Nitziv was sitting Shiva or the Beis HaLevi was sitting Shiva, I forget who, but one of them paid the other a Shiva call and said, and, I, and somehow during the Shiva visit, they made the Shidduch between Reb Chaim and the Nitziv's granddaughter, uh, the daughter of Reb Rafal Shapira, who was one of the Magid Eshir, one of the uh, lecturers at the Velazhin Yeshiva. And he was the Koresh Yeshiva along with the Nitziv from 1880 until the Yeshiva's closing in 1892. Reb Chaim Soloveitchik revolutionized Torah learning, was um, a sp specific, especially in the area of Talmudic analysis and the way that yeshivas learn today. And every single year at his Seder, he would explain to his family the difference between the obligation of Sipri Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, with telling over the story of the Exodus, versus what we do every single day of the year, which is remembering the Exodus. And he explained that there are basically three major differences. The three major differences are, number one, with regard to Sipri Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, with telling over the story, that it needs to be in the form of a dialogue, right? Like every other um, uh, story that one tells over, right, is done in the form of a dialogue. There should be a back and forth. It should be a conversation. The stories that stick with a person are the ones that they experience, the one where there is some form of back and forth. Number two, and which we don't do every night, the, every single day of the year. We don't turn to our friend every day, every day of the year and say um, uh, the story of the Exodus. We only just remember it in our minds, right? It is unilateral versus this, a, this you know, um, uh, dialogue that takes place when we fulfill the mitzvah of Sipri Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Number two, said Reb Chaim, is that when it comes to Sipri Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, you have to tell all the details. All of the details. Maschel begnos masayim b'shvach. You start from, you, you, you tell over the nasty parts of our history, where we made mistakes, what led us to the land of Egypt, what we did there, how we were, were downtrodden, how we turned, and, and then we end with shvach, we end with praises, we end with, all of the good that happened at the end of the story, we lived happily ever after. This is, you know, the, the full picture. You have to give over the full picture. Um, you can't skip any pieces. You have to tell every single detail the night of the Seder. That is number two, as opposed to every night of the year, we just have to simply remember that the Exodus happened, okay? Also added on Rabbi Weiss to that, he said, that's why you have to, it's not just enough to tell over the story. You have to tell over the story and that it happened tonight, right? You have to tell over the story. And this evening is the anniversary of this whole event. Number three is that not only do you have to tell over the story in the form of a dialogue, but you also need to talk about all of the mitzvot that pertain to the Exodus. And that we do these mitzvot in commemoration of the fact that we were taken out of Egypt. We eat a Paschal lamb, and God willing, the Beis Hamikdash, Beis Hamikdash should, be, should, should be rebuilt very, very soon so that we can fulfill that aspect of the Seder. We eat a Paschal lamb, we eat a carbon Pesach because this commemorates the Exodus. We eat matzah because this commemorates the Exodus. We eat marah because it commemorates the Exodus. All the things we do the night of the Seder have to go in the context of we do this because of the Exodus. You have to talk about the laws and how the laws play into it, as opposed to every night of the year, which of course we don't have to do that. Now, said Reb Chaim that the, that the Rambam makes this, in, makes this abundantly clear and obvious that these aspects of Sipri Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim are part and parcel of your fulfillment of recognizing yourself as if you're leaving Egypt, meaning that all of these things are there in order to get to that end result. So in fact, every single aspect of the Seder is to act, it's, it's, an, it's, it's experiential for you to get to the place where you can experience yourself as if you're leaving Egypt. And as we explained, it means to view yourself as if, quote unquote, you're leaving Egypt, as if you're quote unquote leaving Egypt, that your life is no less of a miracle. And, and Reb Chaim pointed to a line here in the Rambam, where he says, by the way, this is why we have specifically by Sipri Yitzhiz and Shrim, that Kol Hamar Bahar is a Meshubach, that anyone that talks more about it, it's even better. Why? Because the end result of you actually experiencing God in your life in that kind of a real way 
is going to be that much more potent the more that you do it. That's why specifically with regard to the mitzvah of Sipri Yitzis and Shrim, we have this concept of kol hamarbe, that anyone that does it, that does more of it, you talk more about it, then hariz a meshubah. Writes the Rambam the following. He says, that's why he says, Kol mishalo omar elu bepesa, chamisha asar. This is what we say in the Haggadah, that anyone does not say these three, three things, the night of the Seder, does not fulfill their mitzvah. Ve'eluhein pesach matzo mar. You have to talk about carbon pesach, you have to talk about matzah, you have to talk about mar. And then the Rambam says, Udvarim elu, all of these things where he talks about talking about the halachos, and earlier he was speaking about, you have to talk about all the details and the fact that he writes over here, that you have to, he says that you have to do it in a question answer format. All of these different halachos that, I'm, that I just said before, this is all part of the mitzvah of recounting the exodus, of recounting the story. And then the Ramam goes straight into the whole door of a door, Chayav Laharos Asma, that every single generation we're obligated to view ourselves as if we are leaving Egypt. The, and and that's why after when you when you put it all into context, that's why the hall of the night of the seder is so unique, because it is a hallel that it is perhaps the only hallel during the year that a person is going to experience. That um, is a hallel commemorating or celebrating rather a miracle that is happening to to a person. So God willing, uh, God willing, the seder this year. We should experience Hashem's hand in our lives in the fullest sense of the term, that Hashem should not, should turn from a concept in our lives to a reality in our lives. Uh, and we should be able to fulfill the mandate of Chayav Adam Liros Hisatzmo, Ki Ilu Hu Yatsim so we could say the Hallel, the Night of the Seder, and sing the Hallel, the Night of the Seder with a full bren, with a full heart, with a full recognition of God in our lives. Okay, we will stop here for now. I can hang on for a few minutes if anyone has any questions. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.